Now, the first feature of this matrix product that we need to look at is related to the dimensions of the matrices involved. You may have noticed that uh, I did not mention anything about what dimension the matrices A and B should be. But if you look at the definition, that is not arbitrary. I cannot multiply any two matrices. In fact, in order for this product to work, we need that the dimension of each row of A has to be equal to the dimension of each column of B, right? Otherwise, we cannot take the dot product of those two. Put another way, this means that the number of columns of A, which gives you the dimension of each row, has to be equal to the number of rows of B, which gives you the, num the dimension of the columns. Now notice that those two uh, concepts there, rows and columns, get switched in these two different approaches. Um, so try to figure it out, try to unravel it. Once you, uh, you understand, you'll see it's a fairly simple concept, but it's a very important one. Again, we can only take the product of two matrices if this is satisfied, if this condition is satisfied. Let me show it to you in a yet different way that probably is easier than any of these two uh, formal definitions or formal statements I've given you. So uh, the product matrix, we're going to do that by figuring out what the product matrix will look like. Okay? So let's say that we have a matrix A, and this matrix is of dimensions M times N. So that means M rows and N columns. If I multiply that by a matrix B, which has to have N rows, otherwise it will not be able to multiply by A, and then it may have whatever number of columns, say P. Okay? So we have an M by N times an n by p. Well, the n's in the middle basically get cancelled through the operation of the dot product, gets uh, annihilated, and therefore what we end up with for the, mat for the product matrix is a matrix of dimension what's left, m times p. Okay. So uh, again, this is a little uh, rule of thumb or a very simple uh, rule uh, to help you decide not only if you can multiply two matrices, but also what kind of a matrix you get once you multiply them. Let's look at some other basic properties. It turns out that the matrix product is associative. Ah, we haven't looked at that concept for a while, eh? So uh, you might want to review it. But what does that mean? It means that if I'm multiplying three matrices, it does not matter if I first multiply the last two, so B times C, and then multiply the product times A, or whether I multiply first A and B, and then multiply the product by C. Now the proof of this fact is not one that I'm going to show you in class, nor one I'm going to test you on, because it's really a long and really boring uh, proof. Um, what you may want to do is just check that it actually happens for 2 by 2 matrices, which is the simplest case, there's only four elements, and so the quantities involved are not really that uh, threatening. Uh, but in fact, it turns out that this uh, property is true in general. It is also true that uh, matrix product is distributive. You may have forgotten what that means as well. well remember, distributive pretty much means foiling. Okay? So what that means is that if I have a matrix A and I want to multiply by the sum of B and C, well, that's the same thing as multiplying A by B and A by C and then adding them up. Okay. Now you may want to check that in fact the dimensions of all the matrices involved work both on the left and on the right. Okay. But in fact that is true. Not only I can do it on this side, but of course there is distributivity on the other side. Once again the proof is pretty long and tedious, does not really tell us very much, and so we're going to leave it alone. You may want to check it for 2x2 two two matrices. Now, here is the really important thing about matrix product. And that is that unlike the product of two regular real numbers, or even unlike the dot product, matrix product is not always commutative. Now, do you remember what that means? It means that I, if I change the order of the multiplication of the product, I may not get the same answer. Okay? Sometimes I will. For some situations, the product of two matrices will be the same, whether I write it as AB or as BA, but not in general. To convince you, here is a simple counterexample. Remember, to prove that something is not true in general, all I have to give is a counterexample. Well, try computing the product of those two matrices. This could be a very good basic exercise to see if you understand how this product works out. So pause and compute it on your own. Done? Okay, do you get this? All right. 
Now let's switch those two matrices around and let's compute the product of these two matrices. Notice it's exactly the same matrices. I'm just writing them in reverse order. Well, to the product, what do you get? Yes, you get this matrix, which obviously is not the same matrix as before. So when you multiply two matrices, whether you do it one direction or the other, matters very much. Okay? And uh, in fact, the, uh, the results could be quite different, as it is in this particular very simple case. So generally, when you're multiplying two matrices, assume that AB is not equal to BA, unless you can prove otherwise. As I said, in some situations that is possible, you can do it, but in general you're safer to assume that it doesn't work because in fact it doesn't work for most of the, uh, most of the situations. Now how about transposes? How does transposing behave with respect to multiplication of, of matrices? Well, it turns out that for the transpose of a product it is actually equal to the product of the transposes. Let's look at this statement here. What I'm saying is that if I first multiply A and B and then transpose the product, that's the same thing as taking the transpose of A and B and then multiplying them together. Did you notice that I was being wishy-washy what I just said? Remember that the product of two matrices is not commutative, so I have to be careful in the order in which I multiply them. What this statement is saying is that if I want to compute the transpose of a product of two matrices A, B, A times B, yes, I can compute the transpose of each of them and then multiplying those two transposes, but I have to do it in the reverse order. So A, B transpose is the same thing as B transpose times A transpose. Again, remember that the order does matter very much and we have to be very, very careful about it. So this is a, uh, a little property which, if you remember, uh, you'll be able to do a lot of things very easily. If you forget, you may end up in lots of troubles.